Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Rajkumar's learning app. In this session, we are going to discuss about the Parliament of India. So, part four of the Indian Constitution discusses the provisions related to the Indian Parliament. The Parliament consists of three important branches that is Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and the President. So, combination of these three, we used to call it as Parliament. This parliamentary form of government that we adopt from the British Constitution. Because, you know, British only introduced bicameralism to India. Okay, bicameralism means uh, which consists of two houses, councils of state and, uh, you know, assembly. Okay, legislative assembly. Okay, that uh, in a later time it become, uh, you know, parliament and uh, as per our Indian constitution, it consists around three branches that is Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and uh, President. The organization of the parliament, President, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha as I told you, Lok Sabha which is known as lower house, first chamber or popular house and Rajya Sabha which is known as upper house or else we used to call it as second chamber or house of elders. In Rajya Sabha, councils of states, okay, in Lok Sabha which is known as legislative assembly, okay, legislative assembly. Right, so composition of Rajya Sabha. So, first we need to know the maximum strength. Maximum strength is fixed at 250. Out of 238 are to be the representative of a state and union territories. The 12 are nominated by the president from the different fields such art, you know, literature, music, sports likewise. Okay, for example, Sachin Tendulkar once was the MP of Rajya Sabha. Okay, so total how many seats in Rajya Sabha? 250. Out of that, 238 seats are to be the representatives of the states and union territories. Okay, so the remaining 12 seats are nominated by the President of India. This is the composition of Rajya Sabha members. At present, the Rajya Sabha has around 245 members out of this. 229 members represent the states, 4 members represent the union territories and 12 members are nominated by the president of India. So, right now we have 245 members in the Rajya Sabha, 229 members are representing the states and union territories and the remaining 12 are represented, you know, are nominated by the president of India. The fourth schedule of the Indian constitution deals with the allocation of seats in the Rajya Sabha to the states and union territories. Okay, so which schedule? Fourth schedule of the Indian constitution which clearly gives the provisions related to the seat allocation from the respective states to the Rajya Sabha. The representatives of state in Rajya Sabha are elected by the elected members of the state legislative assemblies. So, the seats are allotted to the states in Rajya Sabha on the basis of population. Okay, so they have come up with the differentiate of numbers of uh, you know members that is members of the parliament MPs to the Rajya Sabha based on the proportion of the population of the particular state. Okay, so now the composition of Lok Sabha. The maximum strength of the Lok Sabha was fixed that is 552 seats. Out of this 530 members are to be the representative of the states around 20 members are the representatives of the union territories and two members may be nominated by the president of india from which community anglo indian community okay remember the total number of seats 552 in lok sabha out of this 530 members were uh, to be a representatives of the states and uh, states and 20 members from the union territories and two members were the people from Anglo-Indian community nominated by the President of India. At present, the Lok Sabha has around 545 members. The representative of states in Lok Sabha are directly elected by the people from their respective constituencies. The voting age was reduced from 21 to 18 years by the 61st Constitutional Amendment Act of 1988. Remember, before 1988, the adult franchise, adult franchise means right to vote based on the age. 
it was 21 in India. But in the 1988, based on the 61st Constitutional Amendment Act, the voting age was reduced from 21 years to 18 year old. So now 18 year old citizen in India can cast their vote for which assembly? Okay, MP as well as MLA elections. Duration of two houses of parliament. Okay, two houses of parliament have the different kind of duration. The Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. And also, it is, it is not at all subject to the dissolution. Dissolution means uh, if the BJP government is formed and now next time the Congress is coming to the power, so they need to dissolve the house, that is Lok Sabha. But in the case of Rajya Sabha, it is not dissolved because it is a permanent body. However, one third of its members retired every second year. Okay, one third of the members of Rajya Sabha, they used to get retired every second year after holding that particular post. The retiring members are eligible for re-election and re-nomination any number of times. So once they are okay, retiring after every two years, then they can come up with the re-election and also they are eligible for re-nominating to contest in the, in, you know, in the member of Rajya Sabha. Unlike the Rajya Sabha, the Lok Sabha is not continuing chamber. It is not continuing chamber because the normal term of the Lok Sabha is around five years. Five years. When the first meeting happened, after that general election, the first meeting from that time period, okay, five years, which is automatically dissolves. Every five years, there will be election. So, every five years, there will be a change of government also. This is the differentiate between uh, Rajya Sabha as well as the Lok Sabha. Qualification and disqualification and other things related to being a member of the parliament in in Indian, uh, you know, as per the Indian constitution. Eligibility, citizen of India and minimum age 30 years in Rajya Sabha, 25 years in Lok Sabha. If you want to become a member of Rajya Sabha means minimum 30 year old and 25 year, 25 year in the Lok Sabha. He must possess other qualification, all which prescribed by the parliament, okay, based on the act name called RPA. Representation of People Act 1951, which provides the provisions related to the elections and all other regulations related to the MPs, MLAs. Okay, criteria for disqualifying an MP. Okay, if he holds any office of profit other than his posting under the union or the state government, that is first criteria to disqualify. If he is of unsound mind, and stands so declared by a court. Unsound mind means not taking decision properly. If he is a undischarged insolvent, okay, undischarged insolvent bankruptcy. If he is not a citizen of India or has voluntarily acquiring the citizenship of any foreign state or is under any acknowledgement of elegance to any foreign state. So that is also comes under disqualified. If he is so disqualified under any law made by parliament that is RPA 1951. Okay, so these are all the criteria for disqualifying the member of parliament. The constitution also laid down a person shall be disqualified from being a member of parliament if he so disqualified on the ground of defection under the provisions of 10th schedule of the constitution. Okay. See, this is very interesting and also which is happening in India nowadays. Defection. If I am the member of the parliament belong to one party called X. After getting victory and after getting post, any kind of vote, confidence or anything. If I am voting and shifting to another party, which is called as party Y. So, contested in the election from X party and got the seat from the X party, but giving my support to the Y party. Okay, this kind of activity, which is known as defection. Okay, so this also one of the ground for the disqualification of the MPs. Double membership. A person cannot be a member of both house of parliament at the same time. He can be a member of either Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. It is not possible for him to hold the two Membership, like you know, person cannot be a member of both houses of parliament. A house can declare a seat of member 
vacant if he is absent from all its meetings for a period of 60 days without its permission. If any MPs are taking 60 days off without the permission of respective houses, they will be removed from the post. Okay. <clears throat> So all these things comes under your uh, disqualifying, disqualifying an MP. Next sessions of the parliament. A session of a parliament is the period spanning between the first sitting of a house and its prorogation. Prorogation means dissolution in the case of Lok Sabha. The time period between the prorogation of a house and its reassembly in a new session is called as recess. R-E-C-E-S-S. -S. Which means every session have a gap, right? Those gap which is known as races. There are usually in India, we have three sessions in the parliament. The budget session is the longest and winter is the shortest. So budget session from February to May. The monsoon session from July to September. And the winter session is from November to December. Only three sessions of the parliament will happen okay, in Lok Sabha. Rajya Sabha, we don't have any kind of session, but it's a permanent body. Okay, so three sessions, budget, monsoon and winter, February to May. So this June period, which is known as recess. Okay, July to September. So this October, which is known as recess. So likewise, right. And you know, from December to January, so one month, there will be a gap of all the three sessions. And what are the types of bills were introduced in the parliament? We have four types of bills were introduced in the parliament, such a first type of bill which is known as ordinary bill. Okay, ordinary bill. To introduce the ordinary bill in the parliament, all the provisions comes under article 107 and 108 of the Indian constitution, which briefs about what is this ordinary bill. Okay, ordinary bills are related to any other bill except the money bill. Except the money bill, Whatever the bills introduced in the parliament, which is popularly known as ordinary bill, it can be introduced by an individual MP also, or you know, outsiders or private member, which is known as ordinary bill, which is not considering any kind of money bill. Next one is money bill, Article 110, which briefs about what is this money bill. Okay, any matters like public expenditure, revenue, and taxation. All this comes under your which bill? Money bill. And financial bill related to this provisions were discussed under the Article 117 Clause A, Article 117 Clause 3 of Indian Constitution provides the financial matters which are different from the money bills. Constitutional Amendment Bill, Article 368. 368. This Constitutional Amendment Bill provides a special power related to the amendments if any new provisions of the constitution supposed to make in the parliament means that resolution were passed under the constitutional amendment bill that provisions comes under article 368 of your indian constitution okay important parliamentary terms and some points about the motions okay other things and all we'll discuss in this <coughs> slide the maximum gap between the two sessions of parliament cannot be more than six months. Okay, six months one supposed to happen. The president summons and prorogates the two houses of the parliament. Okay, dissolve as well as calling for uh, you know the session which is given someone given by the president of India. Okay, quorum is the minimum number of members required to present in the house. Any transaction of business, the parliament requires a minimum number. Okay. It is one tenth of the total number of members in the each house, including the presiding officer. It means at least 55 members are supposed to present in the Lok Sabha and 25 members are supposed to present in Rajya Sabha, which is known as Quorum. Next, every minister and AGI, Attorney General of India, have the right to speak and take part in any kind of proceedings in either houses. Any joint sitting of both houses or any committee of parliament of which he is a member without being entitled to vote only they can <coughs> you know write to speak. Next term is the lamb duck session. What is the term lamb duck session refers to the last session of the existing Lok Sabha after a new Lok Sabha has been elected. 
so last session of the current government that session which is known as lamb duck session because after that session the government will be dissolved and the new government will take a charge question number is the first hour of every parliamentary sittings every parliamentary sittings the first hour which is known as question hour okay a starred question means requires an oral answers and hence supplementary questions can follow if i ask any questions the person can reply orally that is known as starred question unstarred question on other hand requires a written answer okay hence supplementary question cannot follow but in the uh, starred question supplementary means additional question can be followed but in unstarred question supplementary questions cannot follow because if any question i ask they need to provide the handwritten reply a short notice question is one that is asked by giving a notice of fewer than 10 days and it is also answered orally if any question asked under the short notice question 10 days time has to be given and they will come back and they will give you the oral answer next the zero hour it starts immediately after the question hour and last until the agenda for the day that is regular business of the office is taken up in other words the time gap between the question hour and the agenda is known as the zero hour it is an indian innovation in the field of parliamentary procedures and had been existent since 1962 so right after the question hour which follows till the agenda gets over that particular term which is known as zero hour adjournment motion no confidence motion this adjournment motion only can be introduced in the parliament to draw attention of the house to definite matter of urgent public importance and needs the support of around 50 members to be admitted rajya sabha is not permitted to make use of this device and the discussion should last for not less than 2 hours and 30 minutes okay any adjournment motion was announced in the parliament means the purpose of that motion is to take any serious decision okay serious or any important uh, in a matter of public so for that purpose around 50 members support is required and this particular urgent motion should ha not happen not less than 2 hours 30 minutes okay only which house can do this lok sabha not rajya sabha no confidence motion article 75 of the indian constitution says that the councils of ministers shall be collectively responsible to the lok sabha collectively responsible to the lok sabha as i told you councils of ministers have categories cabinet ministers ministry of independent okay ministry of independent independent charge ministry of state mos ic mos cabinet ministers it means the ministry stays in the office so long as it enjoy the confidence of the majority of the members in other words the lok sabha can remove the ministry from the office by passing no confidence motion that particular motion needs to get support of around 50 members to be admitted okay consolidated fund of india what is cfi okay consolidated fund of india it is a fund which all receipts are credited and all payments are debited it is related to the all revenues received by the government of india and all loans raised by the government by the issue of the treasury bills loans or you know any advances and all money received by the government in repayment of loans from the consolidated fund of india this cfi was mentioned in the article 266 of our indian constitution next one is pai public accounts of india all other public money all other public money other than which are credited to the cfi received by or on behalf of the government of india shall be credited to the public accounts of india which means the fund which is not comes under the cfi all other funds comes under the pai that is public accounts of india next one is contingency fund this contingency fund the constitution authorizing the parliament to establish this cfi contingency fund of india which is determining by a law or paid from time to time okay paid 
from time to time. Accordingly, the parliament enacted the Contingency Fund of India Act in 1950. 1950. Okay. This fund is uh, you know placed at the disposal of president. So, president can make any kind of advances because you know about uh, many natural calamities will come or other uh, unforeseen you know expenditure will happen right for that purpose they will take money from contingency fund of india and the fund released by the president of india okay public accounts committee 22 members will be there 15 members from lok sabha seven members from rajya sabha the term of the members is one year okay a minister cannot be elected as a member of the committee only the chairman of the committee is appointed by the speaker from amongst its members. Okay, that is known as public accounts committee. Okay, so based on the points, whatever we discussed, we have few, uh, you know, quiz. A motion of no confidence against the government can be introduced in which house? Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha, both Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, neither A nor B. I told you, the motion of no confidence only can initiate in the Lok Sabha, lower house, not in the Rajya Sabha. <clears throat> How many sessions of the Lok Sabha take place in a year? Three sessions. Okay, monsoon session, winter session and budget session. Three sessions only take place. Which of the following are not the session of the Lok Sabha? It's easy summer session we do not have such a summer sessions as a special the parliament of india consists of the following i told you three organs in our parliament that is lok sabha rajya sabha and the president so your answer is both a and b okay three organs next indian parliamentary system is based on which model westminster model westminster model of england I told you British is the one who gave the parliamentary form of government. Okay. So, practice more number of quiz uh, from this chapter and also go through the slides for your understanding of this chapter. Okay. So, we will see you in the next session. Thank you.